the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're going to talk about text basics. And we've already seen how we can add text and we've played around with text a little bit, but we're going to continue that on because believe it or not, there is quite a lot to it. And the main thing I want to talk to you about in this particular video is text boxes versus text shapes. I want to make sure that you're clear on the distinction between the two. So I have course file 10 open on the screen, which currently doesn't have anything in it. So let's change that and grab a circle from our basic shapes and drag it onto the diagram. And I'm going to use my zoom slider at the bottom just to zoom in a little bit. So this is a little bit easier for you to see. Now, without clicking anywhere else, I currently have the shape selected. But if I start to type the word circle, you can see it appears inside a text box within the circle. And what you'll find is that most shapes that you'll use in Visio have text boxes already assigned with them. And if there is a text box, it's mostly there to identify the shape. And that could be any kind of shape, not just necessarily a basic shape. If maybe you've dragged something onto the office layout, for example, you might have a label inside which says desk or maybe plant pot or something like that. So much of the text that you see in a drawing is normally associated with a shape. Now there is also a different type of shape called a text shape. And you would use text shapes to put text on a drawing that isn't necessarily associated with a specific shape. So you might use a text shape to put a title on the drawing. And you'll find that option on the Home tab in the Tools group. And it's this little option here which says Text. And, and you can see that there is a keyboard shortcut for that of Control plus 2. So if I click this, I can go to the top of my drawing and I can add a text shape which contains something like a heading. Now we're going to come back to this and do some formatting a bit later on. But remember, your text shape tool is still selected until you click back on the pointer tool to do something else. So we've seen text that's associated with a shape. We've seen how you can use the text shape option to add text that's not associated with a shape. And the third type of text is a text block. So let me show you a quick example. If I select this circle and then go up to the Home tab and back into that Tools group, there's another little option just here called Text Block. And what you can now see is that there is a rectangle around the outside of that text with sizing handles. So this is what I'm now looking at, a text block. So currently this text block is nearly as big as the circle and you can see that I have the text in the middle. And what I can do here is I can change the size of the text and also the block. So if I wanted the word circle to appear towards the top, I can change the alignment within the text block. And I'm going to talk more to you about alignment a little bit later on. Alternatively, I could reshape the text block itself by dragging these resize handles in. Now, one thing that's worth noting is that not all shapes have text boxes right in the middle. So for example, if I open up the computers and monitors stencil, I'm going to grab the terminal shape and just drag and drop that onto my drawing. Now, if I want to identify where the text block is for this particular shape, what I need to do is make sure that I have the shape selected up to my tools and click on text block. And you can see that the text block is underneath the terminal and I have resizing handles so I can drag that out. So what I can do here is maybe type in a label, something like Debs, and that appears underneath the shape. So the point I'm trying to make here is that where that text block appears will vary depending on the shape. Now, if you have text blocks like this, you, you can move the block relative to the shape. So if I wanted this text block to be somewhere else, I could move it up onto that terminal screen. I'm going to use those resize handles. Let's drag it down a bit. And I've now got it positioned inside that screen. So you can move around those text block labels. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my basic shapes. I'm going to drag a circle onto the drawing and I'm just going to make that quite a bit bigger. And before I start typing any text into here, I'm going to apply some formatting to the text to make it a lot bigger. So up on the Home tab in the Font Formatting group, I'm going to keep the font on Calibri, but I am going to change the size to, let's say, 24 points. And I'm going to type in the word circle again. 
Now if I select the circle and I want to identify the text block, remember, click on the text block button and it's going to show you that. And what I'm going to do now is change the alignment of this text using the alignment tools in the paragraph group on that home tab. So I could, for example, align this to the top of that text block. So don't forget about your alignment tools up here if you want to align something within your text block. Now I'm going to make this circle a little bit smaller and you'll notice even though I'm making the circle smaller, the text size is staying the same, 24 points. Let's move that down a little bit and I'm going to drag a square from my basic shape stencil and place that on the drawing. Once again, I'm going to change the font size to 24 points and I'm going to type the word square. Now you can see at the moment that this square is essentially upright. But look what happens when I use the rotation handle to rotate this object around. As I rotate, the text also rotates with the square. Now that might be exactly the effect that you want to achieve, but sometimes you might want to be able to rotate the shape, but have the text stay in the fixed position. So if I want to keep the word square horizontal and just rotate the shape, all I need to do is select the text block, use the rotation handle, and just rotate the text block back to where it should be. And now I have the shape rotated, but the text remains horizontal. So the point here is remember that these are independent of each other, so you can rotate the shape, but also choose if you want to rotate the text block as well as the shape. Now I'm going to put this square back to how it was. Let's select that text block and also rotate that back round. So now let's take a look at what happens if we use some connectors. So I'm going to connect the circle with the square. And we're going to do this by using a connector. So up to the tools group and click on connector. I'm going to select this point on the circle and I'm going to drag it across to this point on the square. And let's just make sure those are in line. I'm going to move the square down a little bit. Now one thing that you might not be aware of is that connectors also have text blocks. So if I select the connector and click on text block, you can see those resize handles where that text block is. So let's give this a label. I'm going to call this connector. And then I'm going to select all three shapes. So let's click back on our pointer tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle around everything. And look what happens when I choose to rotate all three objects. Notice that the text on the connector always stays upright. And that's because the text block on connectors will only align horizontally or vertically. So that's just another little tip that's useful for you to know. Now, so far we've been looking at text blocks associated with shapes. So let's now focus back on our text shape. And if you remember, this is what you use if you want to add text to a drawing that isn't necessarily associated to a shape. So something like a header as we've used it in this example. And remember, once you have your text shape, you can then format it. So I'm going to click on text basics and I'm going to use all of the tools in my font formatting group to change the way that this title looks. So let's make it bold. Let's increase its size to 36 points. Maybe I want to align that to the left and I can also do things like change the color. And if I wanted to change something specific with one of these words, if I double click, I can then select a specific word and let's just make this italics. Now, if you've used any other kind of Microsoft application, maybe Word or Excel, you'll probably find this pretty straightforward as most of the options we're using here are exactly the same across all of the Microsoft applications. And of course, if we decided that we wanted to make a universal change to all of the text on our diagram, we can press the Control A keyboard shortcut to select everything. And then maybe I could choose to change this to a completely different font. So let's go for something like this. So those are all the different ways that you can add text onto your drawing. That's it for this lesson. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.